Let's talk about zero payroll. Now, firstly, it's certainly not everybody's favorite payroll software, but if you've got a straightforward payroll to run, if perhaps you're only a sole director or maybe two directors in your business paying yourself a salary every month, there's absolutely no reason why zero payroll won't work for you. And I can also add to that that there's no reason why you can't do your own payroll. Now, I'm not saying that payroll is straightforward. It isn't. And I'm not saying that I'm a payroll expert because I'm not. But if you have a straightforward payroll, you can get Zero to work for you and you can do it yourself. And in this video, I'm going to talk you through the steps of what you would need to do to set up your own Zero payroll. Now, the most sensible time to switch to Zero payroll is at the start of the tax year. So ideally, it's we're in March 2024 at the moment. You could be setting up your payroll from April 2024. Let me talk you through the steps, what you would do, and then I will also show you. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that you're registered as an employer. You need to do that through your government gateway. And then the next thing you want to make sure that your zero license includes payroll. You will have to pay extra for zero payroll. Sometimes there are special offers. So you're set up as an employer, you've got zero payroll, then what do you need to do? Well, you need to have a look at your chart of accounts in zero and make sure that you've got the codes that you want. I'll show you those. I'll talk you through my suggestions later. Then you're going to go to your payroll settings. You're going to set up your company information, HMRC information, and then the pay items that you need to include for your employees. For a straightforward payroll, we won't get too involved in payroll calendars, pensions and holidays. Once you've got your settings, then you need to add your employees in zero, and then you're ready to process your first pay run. Okay, to make it much more easier to understand, let's head into zero and take a look. Okay, let's look at setting up zero payroll. So we are an employer and we've already added payroll to our zero subscription. So where are we going to go? Well, we're not actually going to go straight to payroll. First of all, we're going to take a look at the chart of accounts. So we're going to go to chart of accounts. And if you've followed me, you will have some idea of the things that I might be talking about here. We're going to look at the salary codes. Now I know the code is 477 for salaries and 478. It's going to be a very straightforward payroll. So we're only going to include a di one director. So we're only going to need director's remuneration. We've also got employer's national insurance. And then if we scroll down to code, the 800 codes are our liability codes. And if we go to 825 and 826, we've got PYE and NIC. Now I don't see any need for these to be separate. So what I would recommend is you go to the PYE and you change the name of it. And it, we now want it to say PYE and NIC payable. We'll save that. We could change the description if we wanted to. We could say we're not going to use this one for NIC. So we could delete or archive it. Okay, that was pretty straightforward. Now we can go to payroll. So we're going to go to payroll settings and we're going to look at an organization. It's asking us which bank account we're paying payroll from. That's not really relevant because we're not going to do the payments from zero. Where's the PYE? PYE and NIC liability. And look, the NIC one is now gone. So again, we're picking up 825. So we're saying any liability due to HMRC for PYE or national insurance is going to go to code 825. 477 for salaries, that's fine, but we're only having a director in this example. So we're actually going to change it and we're going to say 478. This is the default, you can change it for each employee. We're not doing employee benefits, so it's a very straightforward one. So now we can say save. We'll move to HMRC. Don't worry about this warning, this is because I'm on a demo company. So you need to have your employer information. So you've got two references. You've got an employer's PYE reference that you put in here and here, and you've got an accounts office reference that goes here. If you're not dealing with CIS, we can skip the other optional boxes. Then it's asking us, are you eligible for small employer relief? We're going to say no on the assumption that we only have 
one director in this company. So again, we're going to untick this. If you're unsure what this means, you can refer to HMRC's guidelines, which I would always recommend. Now, this is a bit of a weird user ID and password, but what you're entering here is your government gateway details. So that's your 12 digit code and then your password. On the demo company, clearly this doesn't make sense, which is why it's in red and why we've got the error message. But once we're happy, we'd be saving this and we heading on to calendars. Remember, it's straightforward payroll that we're talking about, so I would only recommend that you set up a monthly one. Then working patterns, this is something that's quite new in Zero. Zero was never that great for dealing with employees who had unusual work patterns. So now you can add a template. So for example, if you've got full-time employees, and we'll assume our director is full-time, and they're gonna work seven hours each day, each day, i.e. Monday to Friday, and that's all that you need to do. If it's for new earnings, you can tick the box and just say add template. Then if we move on to holidays, I'm not going to get involved in this because we've got a straightforward payroll and keep saying that. That's what I'm showing you. We don't need to worry about holidays. It's going to be a salary regardless of the holiday dates. Workplace pension. Okay, we're going to be able to skip this because again, we're dealing with the most straightforward setup where at this stage we're going to assume there isn't a pension. Pay items, and this is where you add anything that you need. So the one that you're going to use mainly is regular hours. You can see it says it's going to code 477. We can edit it that, and we can say we're going to use code 478. We can save it. So if you wanted something new, you can add, it's going to be regular earnings. And if you wanted to say monthly salary, and then what you wanted to say on the pay slip, well the same, optional, but I'll just key it in if I can spell. And if this is for non-directors, we'd be picking up code 477. And we add our pay item. We don't need to worry about opening balances. We're not moving to zero in the middle of a tax year. Okay, that's the setup done. Now we're going to go to payroll and we're going to go to employees. Demo company, we've got some employees here already. We're going to assume ours is blank. We go straight to add a new employee. So we can put whatever we want in here. Don't worry about a middle name, date of birth home address in search but we can just put and you can say it's not in the list whereas normally you'd be picking it up and we say add okay i put zero fill in the wrong place see i don't know at all but the good thing is zero alerts you if you've done something wrong right is it going to work for me now no because it still wants a postcode so now we can see i've never noticed this before this is showing where we are with setting up our employee so we've got their name, we've got their date of birth, we've got their address. If we want our employees to pick up their own pay slips, we can put in a personal email address and invite them to zero me. Again, our straightforward payroll, only one employee, we don't need that. These are optional. I can say save and next, because that section's done. So then employment information, zero will give us an employee number. If we had employee numbers already, we could use them, we could change them. What was the employment start date? Well, we're going to say we started on the 1st of April. Holiday group and employee group, we can skip that. National insurance number, now I've been caught out by this before. Zero puts something in here. If you don't pay attention, you might think, okay, that's the national insurance number in there and leave it. So you want to have your employee's national insurance number. This is the format and you would fill it in. What's your national insurance category? The normal category is A, we will select that. See, I'm not doing anything complex here. If you've got a complex payroll, I wouldn't recommend it. You do it by yourself. Now, what is our salary going to be? Pay calendar is going to be monthly. And then we're going to say add some earnings. Not sure why we've got the cat with the ball of wool, but anyway. So it's an annual salary. We might be paying a low salary to keep our taxes low on salary and add dividends, we'll just put 12,000. So that is the annual amount. If it was hourly, we go to here. We've already got the working pattern from the template. Obviously, we can change that if we need to. So what's the earnings going to be? So it's going to be the regular hours, the name, don't worry too much about it. And it's going to go to director's remuneration. 
start date we know is going to be the 1st of April. We need to confirm and then it's save and next again. Is it a new employee? Yes, we've got a new employee. And then the employee statement. This is the typical statement from HMRC. So A means this is their only employment. B means this is currently their only employment, but they've had one previously. So we're going to choose A. And then we can see what the employment statement is. Just check that that's right. So we don't have previous job information. So it's given us the standard tax code. Again, if you're unsure about tax codes and you need help with your payroll, maybe doing it by yourself is not the right thing to do. So that's the standard tax code. We're happy with that. Do you have a student loan? You need to know this information. We're going to assume no. And then we need to say, yes, James is a director. So when did the, when did the directorship start? We're going to choose the same date. We're going to say the 1st of April. How are we going to calculate director's national insurance? I would always choose the annual method. So this means that you won't pay any national insurance until you get over the limit annually. Save a next and we're going to skip pension. So we're going to say exclude from auto enrollment. We're going to give a reason and we'll say director without employment contract. Save. And this is something new and zero. Well done. You've got James set up. Now we're ready to run our payroll and it's as simple as going to payroll and pay employees. We wouldn't expect to have fortnightly, we would only expect to have monthly. Our dates would be to the month end, not what we have here. But you select what you want from your drop down and say process your pay run. Then Zero will show you what you have for each employee and you can click into them and take a look and check that everything is okay. So we can look at, we have Charlotte here. And then we can save a next because James is the one we really want to look at. So here we see James, we can see his earnings are a thousand pounds because his salary is 12,000 and there's no taxes being deducted. So we're absolutely fine with that. We've got a drop down here option to recommend two things, view your pay slips. And there we can see, so it doesn't show hours and rates like it did on the screen, it just shows your salary amount and that's fine. It says regular hours because that's what we chose. So we might say, actually, I'm not very keen on that. So let's just show you, we'll go to payroll, payroll settings, pay items, regular hours, we can edit. If we wanted to say monthly salary, we'll save that. Now, if we go back to payroll, just to show you, you don't need to be nervous about payroll pick up our draft payroll and we say, actually, we don't want this, we can delete it. We can always go back to the start, it's gone. So now we're going to choose it from the drop down, and we're going to process it again. We're going to go to options, we're going to say view pay slips and we can say monthly salary, that's a bit better, that's what we like to see. And then we can also download the P32. P32 is the document that shows you how much you're due to pay HMRC. And if we select it, we're looking at the first month of the tax year. We can see the taxes due. Of course, that's not James because we also have Charlotte on here, national insurance. And if we scroll down on the second page, we're looking at month one again. And this is the total that we're due to pay, £497 and 12 pence. If you're happy with it, yeah, we're absolutely fine with that. We would just say post. Complete your pay run and it will go to HMRC. So then obviously you need to pay your employees. You would do that the way you make your payments normally and you need to ensure that you pay HMRC the amounts due either monthly or quarterly. The payroll entries have gone into zero. So if we click here, we can actually see what's been processed. This all happens behind the scenes when we use zero payroll, but there we see that's director's remuneration amount. And we've got two directors because we've got Charlotte as well. And then the national insurance, here's the tax and national insurance due. And there is some pension, again, not related to James, but what else was sitting in the demo company. When we pay our employees, what's important, if we go to, in fact, let's just pick up a balance sheet. Last day of April 24, update. And then if we scroll down, we can see this is the PAYE amount due. And this is a wages payable amount due. Uh, again, demo company doesn't quite make sense. But if we go into the details, here we go, ignore the brought forward, 
but this is the amount that's due. So when you pay your employees, it feeds through your bank, it's important that you then code it to the wages payable account because the salary cost, if we go to profit and loss account, 30th of April, update, director's remuneration, the cost is now already in there in our zero accounts. So that's how you'd set up a straightforward payroll in zero. I hope you find the video useful, but remember if you do find it a little bit daunting to set up your own payroll, although I'm no payroll expert, I'm more than happy to help you on a one-to-one -one coaching call on Zoom. Check out the link below to my calendar and let's get talking. But until next time, until the next video, happy zeroing.